Leviathan is the new for 2022 wood coaster at SeaWorld Australia. This gravity group creation does a lot of things well. Airtime, pacing, speed, and it also has a unique backwards row. While this coaster is a fantastic ride, it may be the most inefficient wood coaster out there. Find out everything you need to know about this ride in this review. Leviathan was announced in 2019 as part of the $50 million project to revitalize SeaWorld. It would be the anchor attraction in the New Atlantis area. Most notably, Leviathan would be the first wood coaster built in Australia in nearly 35 years. This has led to the coaster being marketed as Australia's most iconic wood coaster. Not sure if that's appropriate for such a new ride though, especially when you have the classic wooden wild mouse at Luna Park, Sydney. But everyone agreed this should immediately become the park's new signature attraction. It was slated open late in 2020. However, the ride was initially delayed until 2021 as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Construction was in full swing in late 2020 and early 2021, and the ride seemed poised to hit its late 2021 opening date. But the ride was again delayed, this time until Easter 2022. Then the opening was further pushed back to September 2022, and finally December of 2022. So why was the ride delayed an additional three times? The park cited pandemic-related shipping delays as the primary cause, but the postponements remind me of what we saw at the US SeaWorld parks. While similar, these parks are not owned by the same company. Yet, both parks seem to keep advertising their new ride to drive season pass sales, only to then push the ride's opening back. This allowed them to milk their new ride. We saw the same thing happen with Iron Gwazi, Pantheon, Icebreaker, and Emperor. I get why Parks did this to maximize the return on investment in a difficult time for the amusement industry, but it was not a good look for the Parks. However, all is eventually forgiven if the ride is a home run, and Leviathan, for the most part, is. This ride is a commanding presence as you enter SeaWorld. The giant wooden structure can be seen from the main road, and it looms over the entry lagoon. The ride's overall appearance becomes even more impressive as you get closer. Gravity Group is the master of cramming a big wood coaster into a small footprint. Just look at what they did with Kima Boardwalk's Boardwalk Bullet. They squeezed a 3,236 foot or 986 meter ride into just one acre. They did something very similar with Leviathan. The coaster has just an extra 44 feet of track, but it was squeezed into a similarly tight footprint. As a result, the ride has a bazillion crossovers. It is nearly impossible to tell where the train will go next. That's especially true when you're waiting in line. The queue is placed in the center of the structure, and you just see the ride going every which direction. The only weird thing with this ride's looks is the abundance of yellow steps in the catwalks running through the layout. It gives the coaster a golden glow when viewed from above on Trident. Along with the ride's physical appearance, you have some awesome theming. It is one of the best themed wood coasters out there. The entrance area is stunningly gorgeous. You have a grassy wall bearing the ride's name and two waterfalls. Then to top it all off, you have two massive bronze statues on both sides. Few entrances look better, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. After riders are batched, you walk through this atmospheric tunnel to the station. It is a rocky cavern that has a dark blue hue, some illuminated ruins, and an eerie cry plays out. It feels like a walkthrough attraction. Then you reach the station as a work of art. It continues that cavern aesthetic and adds a series of video screens. These are on the walls and above you. A giant sea creature, aka the Leviathan, starts swimming around and taunting riders, telling you that you don't belong. I am struggling to think of a cooler station out there. It really gets you hyped up for your ride. While this is one of the ride's biggest strengths, it's also its biggest flaw. It is an amazing reveal seeing that station, but waiting until the last second to show it craters capacity. This is one of the least efficient wood coasters in the world. Each train holds 24 riders. You have 12 rows of two. The last two rows are the special backward seats, which are an upcharge experience. This coaster has and will run two trains in busy days, but the park's owner and village roadshow likes to run one train in quieter days. Only one train's worth of riders is admitted into the station at a time. The next group is not sent through the tunnel until the prior train has been dispatched. With one train on the course, 
you arrive at the station roughly when the prior one completes its course and is pulling back into the station. But with two trains on the course, there will be a train sitting in the station for a minute or two just waiting there. Once in the station, seating is on a first come basis. If you want to guarantee yourself a particular row, ask to be the first one admitted into the tunnel. The attendants seem happy to honor that request if you ask nicely. From what I saw, most people fill the station front to back, so you almost always can get the back rows if you desire them. There isn't a bad seat in this attraction, but I think the rise a bit more power in the back. The backwards row costs an extra $20-25 to $25 per person per ride as of now. While I was willing to pay this a few times as a coaster enthusiast coming from a foreign country, I almost always saw the seat go out empty. I'm sure the park analyzes demand versus the price point, but the fee they charge seemed too high to attract casual guests at least on the day I visited. Whenever anyone uses the backwards row, the grouper radios the station attendants to describe the person who paid for the experience so they know who should be in that spot. And one important note if you're coming from overseas, you need an international data plan to experience Leviathan backwards. The only way to get on the attraction is to purchase a time online. This park has no Wi-Fi, nor a way to sell this experience in person. I tried, even guest relations couldn't. I really hope this can be remedied in the future. We had some issues with our hotspot the day we visited, which made it difficult to even purchase the backwards row for a large chunk of our day. Once everyone has their row, you are briefed about the ride's strict loose article policy. Nothing can ride with you. Everything must be placed in the cubbies on the unload platform. This even includes glasses with a strap and anything in a zippered pocket. I wish this instructions were relayed while you're waiting in the queue so you could speed up the loading. If the ride is running two trains, the platform should be clear by the time you're up there. But if the ride is on one train, you'll have to wait for everyone on the prior train to clear out the station. Another small operational delay is if there's somewhere in the backwards row. As another failsafe to make sure the row is not stolen, the crew waits for everyone else to take their seats. You are not admitted through the air gates until this happens, meaning everyone else will have to wait for those two riders in the backwards row to put their belongings off to the side. Once everyone is seated, the restraint check process is actually pretty quick. You have the standard timberliner lap bars that swivel out from the side. They can come down tightly if the employees push hard, but I find their profiling comfortable even when that happens. Riders in the station are at least entertained by the Leviathan video screen during this arduous boarding process, but it's downright miserable for anyone in the outside queue line. There were points when I thought the coaster broke down, but nope, dispatches really took that long. So what could be done to fix this issue? What I wish had been done was to make the station a dark ride scene before the lift hill. This would allow the full show scene to play out while the other train is being loaded, and it would have kept the reveal the same. This would allow trains to be sent out more quickly. The park claims this coaster has a theoretical capacity of 720 riders per hour, which assumes a train is dispatched every two minutes. Dispatches were taking three times as long. The pre-boarding policies led to this coaster having an hourly throughput of roughly 200 people. That is absurdly low for a major wood coaster, especially one meant to be the signature ride at your park. This ride makes Ghost Rider look like Expedition Everest. With the current setup, I think there are a few things that could be done. First, I wish more groups were admitted into the station at once. This is the norm in other countries, but almost every coaster in Australia lets just enough people into the station to fill that next train, no one else. This has the benefit of having the next group ready to go once the train is ready, and you also have more time to appreciate all those details in the station. I would have happily waited longer here versus that outdoor section. Second. I wish the loose articles were handled differently so people could board the train faster. I wish there had been a way to use a double side locker system similar to some rides in the US. Or at minimum, at least tell riders what the loose article policy is before they reach the platform. There is plenty of time to do so. Again, the restraint checks are fast, but it takes a while to get to that point. 3. I think those in the backwards row could be denoted by a wristband, like you see in Steel Taipan at Dreamworld or some other method like a token. This would allow them to board at the same time as everyone else. This would waste less time. I'm not sure if any of these changes would ever be implemented, but I didn't think it would be fair to criticize a ride without considering possible fixes. 
And to be clear, I am not faulting the employees. I'm almost certain this is the standard they're being told to follow, but it causes the standby line to crawl. There are a few ways to bypass the long waits at least. First, you can use the virtual queue system. This is a free service included with your park ticket. You can reserve one ride at a time on the park app. Once your time is called, you have a half hour to return. Once you use your pass or it expires, you can book another. And you are free to keep booking Leviathan over and over if you so choose. Return times will run out on busy days for this ride, so make sure to grab one early. Second, you can use the park's fast track skip the line system. I did not see this advertised online, but they sold it in person. You can either purchase the full system, which gives you one time access to all the park's major rides for roughly $100, or you can purchase single shots. The latter cost $30 the day I visited. Both Fast Track and Virtual Queue have separate lines bringing you right to the tunnel to be batched. Third, you can pay for the backward seat. I found it funny this was actually cheaper than the single shot price for a forwards ride. To me, I would think the backwards seat would be a far more desirable experience, but that's just my opinion. If you try to go here at opening or close to beat the crowds, two things are working against you. One, SeaWorld does not open rides until a half hour after the front gates, and I've heard this ride sometimes opens late due to the track walks. Two, the park closes lines early so the last train is dispatched right at closing time. Once dispatched, I have nothing but praise for the experience. You turn the corner and ascend the 105 foot or 32 meter tall lift hill. It is a loud lift, but it gives you a good view. You have the water off to your left and the park to your right. You will also hear some aquatic sounds and speaking on the way up too. At the top, you round a tight corner. Speakers then loudly blurt out the ride's name and you can hear this from across the lagoon. Outside of this, there's no theming along the course. Well, unless you count those sweet looking trains with the sea creature on front. Those look fantastic. But that's perfectly fine by me. This ride is so fast paced and frenetic, that it would be nearly impossible to comprehend what you're whizzing past. After that turn, you head down a sizable first drop. It's a straight drop that's fairly steep for a traditional wood coaster. This drop is particularly great in the back row. The tight turn before it gives some laterals, and then you get good sustained floater airtime the whole way down. If you're in that backwards row, it feels like you're free falling as you're pulled downwards. A lot of gravity group wood coasters offer ejector pops, but you will not get those on Leviathan. All of the airtime is of the floater variety. It is sustained in the larger hills and drops, then the smaller humps give quicker pops. While I tend to prefer ejector airtime, the quantity of the airtime combined with this ride's speed makes the coaster feel plenty out of control and exciting start to finish. There is not a single dead spot in this ride. It hauls start to finish. After the drop, you have a big bank turn. It is roughly half the height of the drop, so you charge through it. In fact, most elements on this coaster are low, but the change of direction here gives an abrupt lateral kink. You then rise upwards which gives everyone some decent sustained airtime. Then there's this bank double down. Everyone gets two pops of airtime. The bursts are stronger further back in the train, which makes sense for this type of element. The train then careens around a low turn with some laterals. Then you hop upwards, getting some more negative Gs. Then you turn to what I believe to be the ride's second largest element, this big camelback in the center of the ride. I was worried you'd lose too much speed, well, you get good sustained airtime going over it, particularly on that descent. This is followed by a turn around the queue structure banked at 90 degrees. The visual of your hand scraping against the catwalk is sublime. Then you have a quick dip down and a little speed hill. Both have quick spurts of airtime, and the latter dives into the dense wooden structure to create a fun near miss and enhance the speed. This happens a lot in the second half. You then twist to the left and have a little hump giving a meager bit of airtime. Then you have a larger bunny hill. You get solid floater up front, but it's quite a bit more sustained in the back as you drop back down. Then there's another low turn and this banked double up. Expect two more little pops of airtime. Then you have another sizable drop on the other side. The airtime is pretty weak, but the drop is sort of profiled like an S-bend, so you get a fun lateral kink at least. 
after another turn, you have another drop giving a fine burst of air time and back. Then you have a little speed hill that abruptly tosses everyone into the air. Leviathan then rises upwards one last time, giving those up front a decent pop of air time. Then you round a corner and hit the brakes. It is your first chance to breathe in after 50 seconds of chaos. As I said earlier, this ride does not let up. That's especially true in the backwards row. The layout is already near impossible to predict, but it's even crazier when you cannot see all those hills coming. My one concern with this coaster in the long run is its smoothness. The coaster is brand spankin' new as of now, so it's running fast and smooth. But we've seen some other gravity group coasters tear themselves apart if they aren't properly maintained. These are aggressive rides. Examples include Hades 360 at Mount Olympus and Mind Blower at Fun Spot Kissimmee. This is the first wood coaster at a Village Roadshow Park, so there's no precedent to how they'll maintain a ride like this. I hope they're proactive with the track work because the layout is phenomenal, it just needs to stay that way. So what would I rate Leviathan? I would give Australia's newest wood coaster a 9 out of 10. This feels like an updated boardwalk bullet. The convoluted layout is filled with a bevy of airtime hills and quick turns. You have no clue where you're going next, and the pacing is incredible. The one con with the ride experience is that the airtime never goes beyond floater, but the speed and quantity of those negative Gs is more than fine in my opinion. Then you also have the cool thematic experience as part of the pre-boarding experience. I just hope the park can find a way to boost this ride's capacity. This is a ride you'll want to experience over and over again, but that line will really limit you if the park has any sort of crowds. So those are my thoughts on Leviathan at SeaWorld Australia. What are your thoughts on this wood coaster? Was it worth the wait? Let me know what you think about this ride down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.